we've got a packed house. This is amazing, there's lots of people here. Hello everyone! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I am not a children's entertainer, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I should have brought, I should have brought puppets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> it's not puppets. <laughs> Look, yeah. no, look, I, I actually, no, I did bully you into doing it, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very good. So we are um, changing our format for once, in that we have an expert panel. We have a panel. <laughs> <laughs> Who are here to answer any questions you've got. In fact, I'll let them introduce themselves and they can say what they're an expert in. Ooh. So Ben, do you want to go first? Top stuff. Yeah. Uh, my name is Ben Smith. I am a secondary school teacher in Lytham St Anne's, which is just south of Blackpool. Uh, I think we're the only school in the country to have a dedicated uh, Raspberry Pi network. So when uh, when the kids at my school want to bring in their Raspberry Pis, they literally um, the cables are all there ready on the desk. They plug them in. They plug in a little Ethernet cable that bridges them to a network. And my students run the network all by themselves. It's their project. Um, they run the server, they can distribute software and what we're working on at the moment is getting a big networked game of Minecraft so that they can all play Minecraft together but they can use the, um, the Python scripts that modify the Minecraft world so I can then set, I'm hoping, programming projects where they have to um, iterate through a loop to build a multicoloured rainbow pole and the first one to complete the task is going to be the winner and they'll be the best in the group but we should be able to do Dragon Ball Z fireballs by while looping a, um, a block moving across the screen, and I think that's what I'm expert in. Okay. Right. I'm, uh, I'm Simon Walters. I work uh, across five primary schools in Lancashire, and I'm very much interested in getting the Raspberry Pi into primary schools and getting the kids learning to do scratch, which is very good because from September, um, all the schools have got to teach programming or coding. Uh, therefore, you know, the Raspberry Pi has come along and it's just great, we can get it into schools and start using it. So that's what I'm here for, I'm a, I'm a scratcher and I'm a primary person. Uh, I'm Jason, uh, I work for Syntec who specialise in Raspberry Pi uh, accessories um, and I also design and make hardware to kind of plug onto the Raspberry Pi or work with it in some way. So a lot of this I've kind of done making robotics boards and everything else to attach to make it a lot easier. So we've all been on this pretty much, you know, since the beginning, maybe month two, not month one, you know, and uh, we all met up here, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Well, building down the road. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's the idea of this session. Now it might last 30 seconds, because the questions might be too hard and we have to go home. <laughs> you know, I might think, well, I've got no questions so yet. With you, haven't you? Yeah, it's okay, I've got my phone ready to go. <laughs> so uh, will also be part obviously, of you know, if there's any of the younger ones, obviously, you've got any questions at all, no question, you know, is, some of them might be too hard, but you know, no too easy questions. Do any of the younger ones got any questions you'd like to start off with at all? Or are you going to let the grown ups start in first? You got any questions at all? So, can I ask them some questions? You, you can ask them, but they're supposed to ask us. Yeah. <laughs> so I know try, that's it. Idea. try it. Um, <laughs> so, who's used uh, a robot before on a Raspberry Pi? Put your hands up so that we can see who's made a robot on a Raspberry Pi. Who's used Scratch on a Raspberry Pi before? Alright, there you go. Oh, there's a few more than the Who's used Minecraft before? Oh, yeah, a few I think there. you're winning quite a few folks <laughs> okay, there right, in terms right. of Scratches. Right, right. So, uh, right. Is so, any... Can I ask a question? So I keep asking this, yeah. what's those questions? Yeah. So, what do you think is the most exciting project you've done with Scratch on the Are you asking board. me? Yeah. I thought you were asking them. No, I I'm, <laughs> I'm sat next to the expert as well. Uh, the most exciting, the most exciting, the most, well, uh, my excitement goes day by day. The current excitement is this, which is remote main socket. You know, you might have these for your Christmas tree lights at home. Anybody got a remote main socket at home? Yeah. 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 And now, someone has brought out a board like that, that you just buy for 10 quid, or you buy for 20 quid and you get two sockets, plug it into your Pi, and you can switch mains devices in your house. And now I just think that's gonna be good fun. Might not be what your parents want, <laughs> but you could just, you know, start putting anything you want and program it from your Raspberry Pi. So that just arrived last week, 
and I'm very impressed with that. My first thing comes to mind is that in a classroom, we could have a fan and a temperature sensor. So you could, you could plug a temperature sensor into a pie, plug a mains fan in, and when the temperature gets too high, the mains fan comes on and cools you down in the classroom. So I thought that would make a really, and that was just the first thing that came to mind. Um, so, when, but you know, um, different people come out with different things. Um, somebody came out today with this little box. It's a standard add-on thing for Raspberry Pi, but it uses what they call banana plugs, which we have a lot of kit in schools that we used to use in the olden days. When I say the olden days, I'm talking about the 1980s, that used to just plug in. And this board can plug into a Pi, and then you can just plug in all your old LEDs and switches and buzzers and lights and control it that way. So this is a prototype that came out last week, so I'm very excited by that as well. Right. So Has it, anybody got any ideas for projects that Simon could do with his mains plugs? Yeah. You could use it as an Xbox timer. Oh, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. Like, log on to the website. Yeah. And say, by what time you're on the website. Wait, wait, wait a minute, who are you working for? Oh, so yeah, you're on the wrong side of the <laughs> fence side yet. Of the team. You know. So, yes, well, that would be great. That yes, they yeah. could just power down your Xbox from your bedroom from downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. So we need an app on the phone then as well, Michelle. Okay. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and an Android thing. Yes. Any anything else you fancy right, controlling yeah. mains wise? What about your own bedrooms at all? You got any idea? You might fancy switch on and off. Lights. Lights. Yeah. Eating. Eating. Yeah. Well, these things will take um, thirteen kilowatts. There's quite a, quite a lot of power there. It's so, got to be something fun we can do with a Hoover or something and some kind of, you know, making a, a gun out of a oh. blowing thing across the room. <laughs> well, you know? okay, yeah, could yeah. do, could do, could do. Some kind of vacuum affair. Right, so have any of the grown-ups got any questions at all? <laughs> now, we're, now we're here. Is there any teachers in the audience tonight? All the teachers Ooh. there? Oh, right, yeah, sorry, right, right. <laughs> do you have any questions at all? I do have a couple of questions. Oh, I have one question anyway. Yes. We're currently developing our computing career. Yes. Um, we have piloted a few uh, Raspberry Pi's. We use the Pi Glows on the building. Um, Pi Glow, yeah. Yeah. I was just want some advice for you. What would you recommend in regards to sort of external things attaching to it, teaching children? Like yeah. We're using the Pi Glows, which are quite nice, but I know there's some other things. Is there anything yeah. you would there's a couple of front runners. There's get yourself a robot and a motor controller board, of which there are there are many. You know, you can you could just get that. This is the latest kit that's come out and um, just finished its uh, Kickstarter. Um, the Happy Pi robot, cardboard, batteries, put it together, plug a Raspberry Pi in, comes with a motor controller board, and off you're going. Okay? So once you make a robot up, that's good fun. But the very simple stuff um, is the Pi Brella, because it's 10 quid, so there's no soldering, so you just like the Pi Glow, you're from the same people. It's got three LEDs, green, amber, red. What can we do with green, amber and red LEDs? Yes? Traffic lights, there you are. Very keen on that, yes. So you could do your traffic lights, got a little buzzer that makes the worst sound in the world ever. <laughs> uh, I think there's, there's no excuses for that, it's appalling. But also there's a, uh, another four outputs there. You could control motors, simple motor control um, with LEDs on them. It's also got four protected inputs, which is also very useful. So you can put in switches or sensors and it's got a switch as well. So 10 quid, plug in and go. Use it in Python, control it from scratch. That's good. This is one of my little things, which is called a Pi die, which has got nine LEDs on it, plus the four switches. So it's got a blue, a yellow, a green, and a red. What do you think we could do with the blue, a yellow, green, and a red? Might be the older ones, actually. The, the younger ones might not know about this. The clue's in your name. Is the clue is in my name, name yes. So there's a game called Simon, which was very popular when we were little. And the light, blue light would light up, you press the blue light, and then the green light, the blue and the green light up, so you go blue, green, then it goes blue, green, yellow, you go blue, green, and the sequence goes on and on, and you've got to try and keep up with it. So with this board here, with these, you could program up your own Simon game, but obviously it's got red, yellow, and green. So what could we do with that? <laughs> Traffic lights. And it's got two sets of them, so you could have the red and green man as well. It's got white LEDs, so you could do the weight light. Um, and because it's arranged in a three by three pattern, what else do you think we could do with that? Anyone? Three by three arrangement? Yes? 
dice. Make it into a dice, which is why it's called the pie die. Very, he's good at the back there, isn't he? He's very good. Anything else you've got, you can make a die pattern out of it. I've got, I've got at least one other thing you could do with it. Three by three. So we've got okay. dice. And and the 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 yeah. No, <laughs> no, a, 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 really, really an older really game, an older game that you normally play on a pencil with um, and a grid. Notes and crosses. Now, I've not programmed up a notes and crosses game yet, but I think that's a possibility that you could play notes and crosses. So one light could come on, say, steady, and the other players could blink. That would be my thing to. That's my idea. So it just that's also ten quid or less or nine quid. So with those two things, you've got quite a variety of projects you could get stuck in. Pi, two of them boards, buy your robots. Um, I'm playing with matrices, matrix. So you get 64 by 64, 68 by 8, sorry, which is, you could make a bigger version of that. But also, there's a, a guy called uh, Tom Speller, called at C, C thing C thing. on the internet, who's got a 3D printer, and he's made me up this cover that goes over it, and then it turns those ones into nine LEDs, so you could run the same software as you run on the Pi Dye. Because this does red, green, and if you switch both of them on the same time, you get yellow, so you've got red, green and yellow. So what could you do with that, Ben? <laughs> yes, traffic lights. <laughs> I'm very keen on my traffic lights. So you could do the same with that. But if you take the cover off, I think that gives you, you could play a snake game then, I think, in Python. I was delivering a class today on abstraction and decomposition. So hey, look, can we just translate that to English, please? So breaking down, <laughs> breaking down problems into little bits and then showing how you can hide away all the details and just go, I just want the red light to come on. And we don't care how we get the red light on, we just want the red light on, which is what your um, Scratch DPO program does so well, plug. Um, but I was teaching that today about seven segment displays and if I want to display the Very letter cool. A seven or the seconds. letter B, then um, they're a really cheap piece of kit to buy and uh, they're a great opportunity to talk about um, uh, modeling real world processes, uh, making shapes appear and if, especially if you get a 14 segment you can make all sorts of different patterns um, and uh, yeah they just immediately you've just covered a whole really complex area of computing um, that is fun to do and um, yeah easy to teach I think. And you can do things at any level, you can buy the buyer boards or if you want to, you could get a breadboard and get them to wire it up and then plug it in. Just depends on what level you want to do. Obviously, my, I just want to be able to go. And if somebody says, well, I want to do things myself, then they could, they could wire up boards. Yeah. Can I ask the kids, yeah. would you rather plug it in yourself with the wires or would you rather it came already and then you just programmed it on the computer? Which one do you think? Which one? You'd rather do the wiring yourself? Because the thing is, plugging it in is kind of fun, isn't it? It is, but it gets a bit tricky with them little ones, which is why you need a bigger one. I want a breadboard that uses these. Yeah, that's what I want somebody to do, a, a big breadboard that's made out of four and a half millimetre banana plugs, because mm. I think that would be a bit easier to work on. A bit Lego. A bit, yeah, a bit sort of Duplo yeah. to the Lego version of that. Yeah. So there you go. Well, that's that. Have we got any questions for our technical expert here on esoteric parts of the pie? <laughs> Is any, anybody, anybody robotics at all? Well, there's, there's, there's <laughs> Should we repeat the question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so what, what's the best website to get all this stuff? Yeah. Is this yes. to be independent? I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's basically, you need to, the best thing is to find out who people are. So if you want to know about Minecraft and how it's done in schools, you follow Ben on oh, Twitter. Man. Or Martin, you know. But if you find one, you'll see who they're talking to. Uh, so Twitter is we use that a lot. Huge win. And, um, and 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 Ben here will occasionally send out enough tweets to fill the whole of the internet on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon, showing all his YouTube videos on how to do things. So he spends time and effort now. He has become the world's leading expert in putting up YouTube videos on how to do stuff. Um, so that's what it is. It's just find the links. And but Twitter's good. Uh, also, the Raspberry Pi forums tends to be a bit more for the geeks. That I have to yeah, say. Yeah. Um, whereas you know, your sort of Twitter seems sort of you certainly get more the teaching sort and and just normal people coming along. Plus the geeks as well. And so, I think I think with the with Twitter, you just at Raspberry Pi it and hashtag Raspberry Pi it. And if you ask a question, the people that respond are the people that really want to help you. And then they can point you in the right direction. 
So we're all searching for anything that says Raspberry Pi in it, and if we see a question that we could help out on, you know, then we'll come in and do things. So, that, so that's it. So come on, throw, throw, throw us these questions, throw us these questions. So I, I'd like to know, Jason, all right. I've, I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you the other day at the Jamboree, you had, uh, was it the glove that was controlling the laser, or you uh, had the laser No, it was the wee nunchuck. There we go. Um, so. That was very cool, can you explain what you did on that? Yes. At the Jamboree, did anyone go to the Manchester Jamboree back in end of February? Right. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> on display, I had a wee nunchuck connected to a Raspberry Pi which had a laser and a servo kind of mounted in front of you and you had eight targets in front of you to shoot to turn off the little LEDs but just kind of modifying any standard electronics like for instance the Wii Nunchuck is works perfectly with the Pi so I just create a small add-on so you don't end up cutting connectors off things just so you can still reuse them and then you'll be able to plug that straight onto the Pi so repurposing Old electronics is also good because how many people play on the Wii yeah. nowadays? It's two. Two? <laughs> yeah, you still play on the Wii? <laughs> so you've got, have you got nunchucks? School. Yeah. I mean, I don't, how much are they to buy second hand on the things? But are they a fiver or more or a bit more than that, do you know? Not even that. Not even that. Because the thing inside them, they've got accelerometer, well, accelerometer, so the thing that it can detect that you twist this and tilt it and it can detect the joystick. And Does this one have an accelerometer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jason made his board, I went, yay, programmed a Scratch GPIO, which is in the, the dev version, it's not out yet, that, and I've tried to make it dead simple, so it'll do the joystick, and you can do tilting, so you can feed that into your Scratch programs, so instead of just using the keyboard or the mouse, you can use the nunchuck to control your Scratch programs, first by plugging in, I think these are available. I think these are available at two ninety nine. Yeah, two ninety nine. <laughs> my friend on the left here, <laughs> you know, um, and you know, you've got yourself a very useful input controller to do stuff with. I mean, Martin, in the past, you've done proper uh, Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth with a proper device and everything. Yeah. But this is that. This is really just plug and go. So that's the advantage of this. There's no. There's no. The Bluetooth version is hardly set up. Yeah. So this is, you get you get a lot of value for money out of just doing this, and if you want the uh, the more complicated one, you can go down that route. Yes. So. Uh, but I, I think that's a really cool project uh, with a little laser beam that you can guide around and get it shoot. Well, let's just hold on here. I've just, <laughs> for the for the record, I'm anti laser beams <laughs> being used in primary schools amongst <laughs> children. I just health and safety. I am, you know. That's Every time he's pro laser beams. I know everybody else. <laughs> I so, do, I, so I have a quadcopter that I use in some of my lessons. Yes. Uh, I could put a light sensor on top of the quadcopter <laughs> and we could have the quadcopter <laughs> flying around and you're trying to shoot it with the laser beam. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. like a bright light source, non-coherent. I've, I've got a lesson plan You for. can get some very bright LEDs. Yeah. yeah, so we have a question from the audience. And if you're going to do a shooting game like that, yes. are you considering using it on Oh, I like the way he's thinking. That's awesome. <laughs> So what were you what are you picturing? We have some, <laughs> so we have some kind of camera in the mount that follows the laser, and then you see what the camera's looking at. Oh, it's a headset. The Oculus Rift is a basically two TV screens in front of you, and it, was, it, it and also it's got accelerometer, so it knows when you're twisting and moving around. It's a branded virtual reality. Yeah, it's a virtual reality headset. We could, you could make it out of yourself out of two screens um, and then you put it on and then you feed software in the computer and then the computer can send the images as if you're wandering around. It's, it's sort of uh, and that's a very cool idea. I so you can do that with two... One. You what? I don't see Google's cardboard one. Cardboard one? Yeah. Cardboard. the cardboard one and uh, Google Okay, I'm sort of... You put your, you put your camera, you have your, your phone. Oh right! That was like cardboard. I can't yeah. really say that word. Project cardboard. Oh. Well, just put two phones into them. No, one phone. With a split screen. Yeah, it's about as good as the Oculus Rift. Well, they're probably not quite as good as the Oculus Rift. They have put a lot of development effort into that. You know, I wouldn't like to say you could. It's about as good as the Oculus Rift. Yeah. Have a go with it. Well, we might have a go with that one. That's good. Rift is a bit fuzzy. Okay. Next jam, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yes, any, 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 any other questions at all? Yes? 
Has anybody had any experience with the um, Sonic for Pi? Um, the, the Audible one? The Sonic Pi. Have you had a go at all? I've not had a go at all. I've had a play at home. Um, oh, I'm bouncing. <laughs> terrible. Terrible behaviour. Uh, Carrie Ann Philbin's done loads of work on the Sonic Pi, and as part of the Pi Academy, she's she's pushing that out into schools. Now, I go back to my own work, I find that setting up pies in schools. <laughs> my my wife, can't it. believe you left the live feed on. We just heard you get excited about a question. <laughs> Hello, family! <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. Um, yeah, so uh, Carry On wants lots of work doing with the. Uh, the Razzle Pi in schools um, and Sonic Pi is one way of doing that. I, I find that unless you can somehow collect back in the work that the pupils have done in a classroom, it's it's difficult to use. So that's my experience with Sonic Pi that I need to get it trialled in the classroom to, to take the results back in. But obviously, as a home activity with the kids, it's yeah, fantastic. It's a great it? activity for sequencing, uh, iteration, um, recursion, a, a great, yeah, great bit. Yeah. What limitations do you find in using Raspberry Pi in the classroom? Because obviously I've got to set up and already finding that uh, Scratch is freezing. So I yeah. don't know what sort of, how, how do you troubleshoot that quick enough or you know, what limitations do you have when you put it in the classroom? Do you want to say First of all, if, 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 if it's locking up on you, it's definitely a power supply issue. Right? I mean, I'm, I run mine days and hammering it and developing on it. Um, over Wi-Fi remoting in so you know that it, but any a dodginess on the power supply can cause you a lot of problems and until you make sure that's solid you know but I don't have any issues with my pies yeah. in locking up on a certainly not on a hour by hour basis yeah. you know like after three days in the classroom I'm powering them, powering them through USB from the main computer terminals right. and that's not that's three volts isn't it rather than the big Five, is that right? No, no, no. three threes. Yeah. Yeah. It might be that, but also you can overclock the thing through the settings, so have you tried doing that yet? Well, it might be that the overclock is causing the freeze up, so that might be the other thing. I think we've had issues with the plugs, uh, charging issues with just normal devices and things, so yeah, it, it normally you go down and it, it turns out nine times out of ten. It used to be dodgy SD cards, that, that's been sorted to a large degree, but it's been sorted, should I say, um, but power supplies. So I use the, um, the, the proper Raspberry Pi hub, which produces a little bit more voltage than you need, which allows for a bit of drop across the lead, and it's, it just makes sure that that works all the time. So I, for my main development, I don't actually use a off-the-shelf uh, phone charger. I'm using a proper 15 quid, you know, designed for the Raspberry Pi power supply. Or batteries. That's the other thing I use mine for: batteries, and they seem to work out okay. So, I, you know, I think. But the, the classroom thing is where Ben's done. He's done a lot of experiment on whole classroom, where you where you yeah. go down a slightly different route. Do you want to explain about that? Well, it's whether you want to treat it as an enrichment club after schools for you know an hour with five kids, or whether you want to roll it out to an entire class load. Um, I, I find the same issue that it does take some time for them to realise that it's going to be a little bit slower than a regular PC, and I don't know if there's a way around that. I think no, you know, it's always that. going to be a little yeah, bit it's laggy. Be slower. The scratch thing is um, in the early days was was really slow, um, and it's come. There were a few massive bugs that were knocked out straight away that made it a lot better, and then it got better and better. But now, based on the foundation of our uh, getting an expert, uh, uh, a squeak expert, which is what Scratch is written in, to rewrite it um, so that it works a lot faster. So there's a, a version out at the moment called New Scratch, which isn't quite ready to go for teaching in a class yet, but is is about 50% speed improvement for the likes of Scratch. Um, I don't I don't find the Python too slow when I'm doing Python. That seems to be again when I'm using Minecraft, which is obviously far more in-depth graphics, I've never noticed a drop. Um, and that's proper programming. Whereas with Scratch, I think you're still dealing with baby cartoon graphics, yes. and you're not even properly coding. But, I mean, it all depends on your definition yeah. of proper coding, doesn't no, no, it? But, but the Scratch thing is, and it's certainly getting, it, it's getting faster and faster, and compared, you know, it's not, it's not getting slower and slower. So that should get better and better, and hopefully by August, September, the new Scratch will become the proper Scratch, and that's what people can use. 
can, can I ask the kids a question? Yeah. Have you tried Scratch 2 yet, the one on the website? Have you, have you played on that? Yeah, what do you think? Do you think that's better or worse than the old one? I find it better because it's got all the videos. Yeah, because you can hook it up to your webcam and things really easily. Yeah, that's cool. Because they've moved everything around and they've Yeah, they swapped the left and right, you think. Yeah, it doesn't. Now, the other thing with, with, with Scratch as well, and what I do sometimes, is that I use the Raspberry Pi, but as, as you know, the fact that it's got all the boards to plug in and run Scratch on the main computer. So if you've got laptops, because if you're in a, a room with just laptops, you, have, you can't plug them into a monitor. So um, by a bit of remote control, wizardry, um, you can run Scratch on your main computer, which is as fast as you like, but it's controlling the LEDs on there. So if you, like on my website, if you go on it, you'll find references to SID, called, called Scratch Interface Device. And it, it basically, instead of uh, Scratch running on here, Scratch runs on there and then talks to the Pi. Because the way Scratch GPIO works, Scratch talks to a Python program, Python program talks to the pins. And it's trivial to make the Scratch run on another computer and send it over the network to it. I'd have to show you at work and I could maybe show you that later and you can see what we're talking about. And therefore that offloads all the processing onto a PC. And especially if you haven't got a lab of monitors, that's, that's one way of doing it. Uh, just, um, just as a side yes. issue, uh, Martin showed us uh, UDP IP protocols and uh, my pupils had a great lesson uh, bombarding the front PC and the whiteboard with messages and just spamming it constantly with messages as they were typing on their machines. They've never been that interested in uh, IP addresses <laughs> ever. And all of a sudden when they realise if they learn the IP address, then they can bombard the, the board at the front with the message. And they, they another spare. thing on the, on the scratch front, today at three o'clock, some guy came up with an extension for Scratch 2 which will let Scratch 2 control the Pi remotely. So he's only just published it and I haven't tested it. I said I'm coming to the jam tonight so I can't test it yet. So you can use Scratch 2 running on and then it just talks to the Pi and you can switch the pins on and off using Scratch 2. But that's just, that is hot off the, hot off the press. It only got written last night and I haven't tested it yet. So, you know, it, it, you know stuff's coming on really, really fast all the time. Yes? Can you just explain, kind of an idiot's guy, kind of uh, what Python does, how that sits with the operating system? Uh, Scratch. Oh, on Scratch. Scratch oh, yeah. So you got the Scratch a program, yeah. and basically, when they built Scratch, they made it, it could talk to uh, Scratch on another computer, right, over the network. They kept it hidden a bit, they called it Mesh. But it was, it, was, it was always able to send messages from one scratch running on one computer to scratch running on another computer. And it sends it over the network. So all you've got to do is write a program that listens to many messages going out on the network of a certain format. And then you can, you, 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 you can um, decrypt those messages and then translate them into pin commands. So that's why in Scratch GPI you say broadcast or you know, pin 11 on. And the program goes, oh, he said pin 11. Right, I'll just switch pin 11 on. So it's just lit Scratch actually telling the whole world that you want pin 11 on. It's just running on that computer. There's a little program listening to everything that Scratch is saying. It's going in and out of Scratch. And that's when you go to Scratch GPO and it comes up remote sensor connections enabled. That's what's happening. Normally, it's not switched on, but you just right click somewhere and, and, and enable that. And then anything Scratch is talking about, any variable updates, gets sent out on the network. If they had another computer somewhere else, it could listen in and pick up on those messages. But I just, because you, you've got Scratch and you've got Python available on the Pi itself. I knew nothing about Python, uh, Python when I started, but it was obvious that this was the new language for teaching. Um, obviously when uh, it comes up basic, to replace basic. Um, and so I thought, oh, well, it's all built in. It does Scratch, it does Python. I didn't fancy writing in C, so I wrote it in Python. And there was there was all no, there was already actually again take it back, there was already existing code for the Pi phase in Python. So I just borrowed that from them and modified it and then kept on building it up and up and up. Can I can I say the thing is you've got guys like Simon working in the background making these things, but really from my angle, from my hook, 
Uh, I want to, I'm imagining a lesson here where we talk about broadcasting and IP addresses and encryption and uh, how can we like capture someone's information as it's sent across a network. So how can we like um, create you know HTTP and HTTPS security protocols and lots of that is just a fun way of getting a hook to teach a lesson because for you lot, teachers like me think, well, how am I going to make this interesting? And we're trying to find fun ways of making the lessons a bit better so that you don't fall asleep in the lessons and you think, yeah, I really want to learn about these computers. And then hopefully you guys are making programs and changing the world. That's what we're really after. So I think Simon's just looking at it from a, let's, let's do a lot of the hard background. Work. Yeah, let's do, that's what I'm trying to do to make it so that it's, 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 it's easy to use. Um, you know, for the kids, that's that's my whole object of doing it. Um, well, we're going to start wrapping this up because we have a, a young presenter here who wishes to tell us about his operating system, like what he's writing. Oh, one question. Oh, oh yes. For each of you. All oh, right. Which is, where would you start if you're just getting into um, Raspberry Pi? Where would you start teaching at high school level, junior school level, and doing the hard work? We'll start with Jason. Uh -huh. Where would you start? So if you start with hardware and you're going to start playing with the GPIOs, the easiest thing you can do is get a breadboard, which looks something like that, uh, a couple of LEDs and a resistor, and you just plug in your jumper cables kind of from the GPIO or from a breakout, and then you can use Python Scratch or any other language that you like to kind of make it turn on, turn it off, then you can move on to another thing like a buzzer, make the buzzer to come on, um, to getting on to more kind of technical stuff of doing motors, so you need like a motor driver and then combining the sensors, so starting off with hardware is literally just an LED resistor, a breadboard and some wires, and with that you can kind of jump from doing the software to actually making something in the physical world move and kind of react. And very cheaply. So, LEDs, yeah. Yeah. Um, is that, what was the question again? Uh, where would you get started for... Where where you get, get I would buy a plug-in board and, and get started with Scratch. That's, that's what I would do with my thing. You know, get, get, get a Pi Brother, get a Pi Die. If you want to do the LED, but then you've got to get all that right first. So if you just want to start the Pi Glow, you plug it in, you can start making the LEDs do stuff. And, and then maybe build your own circuit, but you can do it either way. But to get into it, you just buy a plug-in board now and get going. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Uh, I'm a massive Minecraft fan, and I think uh, if you just want to find out what a Pi is, you just want to turn it on and play with it, then that's the way to get started. And it is really, really, really ridiculously easy to make a flashing block, so uh, a red flashing warning block uh, in Minecraft, uh, or an indestructible block in Minecraft using a tiny little Python script. So four lines of code, I, I'm trying to picture them out now, four lines of Python code and you can create a warning block or an indestructible block or you can have a block that uh, shoots through mountains and, and blows up your world, uh, a rocket that blasts off. All um, in the guise of teaching and learning this part. Uh, right? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, but you've got, as well. <laughs> yeah, you've got a uh, while loops in there for loops, if branching selection, sequencing of instructions, traffic lights, we all love traffic lights. Traffic lights. Um, there's masses and you've got a little 3D world that you can explore your creation. Um, but I think just uh, download it, it's free to download. Once you flash your car, uh, you get it on a stick, you plug it in, you, you get to learn about the operating system and what zipped files are and how to decompress them and how to install things on your Pi. And I think that's a, a great start for them getting things that are a little bit more specific, no, I, like Scratch GPIO. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's where I'd start. I'm fine, I might do it when I get home now. I'm so excited about that. Right, um, are you happy to go with the live streaming with our little friend here? Yeah. Grand stuff. First, we should like our panel.